which I hope you will all be uh, able to see now. So uh, my name is Jan van Dijk. Um, I'm a vet. Uh, Zoetis veterinary consultant, working for Zoetis. I uh, live uh, just outside of Chester, so I'm not uh, too far of the road. And I was asked to uh, say a few things, introduce your, yeah, do a little introduction to your discussion evening on um, how we can advance ovine fertility, um, how we can bring forward the, uh, the breeding season and how we can uh, synchronize sheep. And if you're pleased to know, I've got a relatively short presentation, I think, so I won't keep you for very long. Um, and I would like to speak first about why would we consider influencing the breeding season? Um, indeed, so yeah. I don't know much anything about your farm, of course, so I don't know whether you're already doing this or considering this or, uh, but uh, yeah, let's talk first about why we would consider bringing the breeding season maybe forward and synchronizing use. Uh, then what could we do to actually achieve that? And uh, last but not least, <clears throat> uh, talk a bit about the use of cedar ovis maybe uh, some of you have used sponges in the past um in 2018 we launched cedar ovis to the to the uh, uk market and uh, yeah we think it's, it's a very useful uh, tool but we'll talk about that in a bit so why would we uh, try to synchronize a flock sheep and uh, bring the breeding season forward. Well, as you know, uh, Baton and me, uh, the, the Easter's of a uh, sheep is uh, seasonal. So once a sheep starts cycling, it it's, uh, cycles a bit like a, like a cow, but uh, it stops uh, cycling at some point as well. And um, the aim has always been to get the lambs born in early spring so that we can utilize the grass. And um, yeah, preferably have them finished uh, as, quick, well, as quickly as possible, at least. And we're working with a gestation length of uh, about 147 days. So indeed, um, with autumn traditionally bringing on the season, bringing the sheep in, in Easter's, um, yeah, if you want to finish the lambs early, then we may uh, need to consider bringing the breeding season forward. Um, shortening of the, so synchronizing sheep, the, the, the flock, uh, we have some distinct advantages. Um, first of all, efficient use of, of labor, uh, labor costs uh, are, are very important uh, well, part of the, the fixed costs on a sheep farm and um, tightening of the, the lambing pattern can reduce those costs by uh, up to 50%. Um, if all the, use our lambing at the same time. You can be very focused on that, maybe bring them in. Uh, you can pay particular attention to, uh, to the use around lambing that increases animal welfare. Once the lambs are born, if they're all roughly the same age, uh, things like parasite control become a lot easier. And um, yeah, it, if the, uh, as they finish lambs uh, on good grass and uh, will obviously, obviously fetch you more. Um, then in recently, uh, people have started to use multiple ovulation embryo transfer. And that that's again advances uh, profits 
dramatically as we'll see in a minute. But that also means that you will have to have, if you use methods like that, you will have to have some control over the, over the fertility of the U, well, when she's in season and when to inseminate her, for example. Um, as I said, when we lamb earlier in the year, then we, uh, the, the lambs are, start to take a lot, a lot of grass, then uh, the grass is at its best. So that, that really is the best opportunity um, to utilize the grass available. Uh, when we bring lambs to market earlier, uh, let me see that uh, this is a quote from 2018, but I, I guess it will be uh, uh, still be valid. Lambs sold in April and May generate on average 21% more than uh, lambs sold later in the year. So indeed, if you can finish your lambs that early, that's a huge profits up to 18 pounds per uh, 45 kilogram lamb. Um, and then on the genetic improvement side, um, indeed, if we want to use artificial insemination or embryo transfer, then we uh, need to be able to time this, um, for which we need uh, control of the cycle. Now, if we uh, use these methods, then uh, indeed uh, we're able to access uh, far better sires, and this can add an extra three pound fifty sale value per lamb per year. So, how would we uh, bring forward the, the breeding season? Well, there's uh, a limited number of methods. Um, so first of all, how does this, this, the U start cycling normally? Well, the, the light sensors in the eye uh, through a complex feedback mechanisms, mechanism, feedback information, information um, to the pineal glands, which produces uh, melatonin. And the more darkness uh, the sheep experiences the uh, the higher the melatonin levels and uh, when these melatonin levels are high then that again through complex feedback mechanisms works on the so-called pituitary gland which then uh, gives of hormones lh and fsh so follicle follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone uh, which then tell the old ovaries to uh, to start working yeah so normally shortening of day length is through this mechanism a melatonin uh, based mechanism starts off the uh, the cycle so that's the normal process but we can uh, you know out of season to a small extent influence the uh, the use coming into season a bit earlier by introducing uh, the teasers and you may have a lot more experience uh, with this than, than I have. So I'm curious to hear your uh, opinions on this later in the discussion. But um, it's important that the, the, uh, the rams are out of sight of the, of the use for uh, four to six weeks. And then before, about a fortnight before you want to uh, start topping, you Produce the teaser rams at a ratio of uh, one ram per 100 ewes. And this then can marginally advance the breeding season. And yeah, to a small degree, you get some synchronization because the ewes come in heat you know, roughly at the same time. There's also lots of disadvantages to this uh, method, of course, but we bring the season forward a little bit and uh, some synchronization of the aces. Now, the older the, uh, the, the rams are, the better the teaser effect. 
because they produce more uh, androgens and uh, and the hormones that the uh, the used sends. A second way to uh, to start the season earlier is to uh, the melatonin implant. So this is uh, at the uh, base of the ear. You implant the uh, melatonin, and uh, you do that uh, about two months before you want to use to be cycling. Um, introduce the rounds thirty-five days after implantation, and um, yeah, then they uh, they will start cycling. So that's through you could say through a natural mechanism. But you just artificially up the levels of uh, of melatonin. I have, I must say, never used this uh, method myself, and I'm again, I'm curious to uh, to hear what the people have experienced with this, and uh, what the findings were. Now, the the last method, and this is really the method that gives you both an uh, advancement on the on the season and a synchronization of uh, of the use is to give a, a progesterone implant. Uh, like I said, this, the sponges they've been on the market for uh, for a long time. Quite likely they will uh, look familiar to you. So they are literally a circular sponge with a yeah a piece of string um, for the re removal of the sponge. And uh, these are drenched with uh, progesterone. So that we'll, we'll look at that in a minute, how that works. But um, so you artificially introduce a, a source of progesterone and, uh, and then remove that 14 days later. And then the removal of that progesterone actually uh, helps to induce estrus. And at the same time, you give uh, an injection of PMSG. Now, Cedar Ovis, um, and it will be launched in 2018. That's also a progesterone uh, device. It, uh, in contrast to sponges, it, uh, it contains a natural progesterone. And you leave the, uh, I'll show you how to uh, insert and, and remove and how it works in a minute. But you, uh, you insert and leave the device in for uh, for 12 days and um, yeah apart from that it's uh, it works in a similar fashion so how does this work very briefly this is just for for bonus points i don't feel like you have to remember this um because it, it looks quite complex but at the, the bottom of the brain there's a part of the brain called the hypothalamus which can excrete a, a hormone called GnRH, which then uh, gives the pituitary gland the stimulus to produce this FSH and LH. And, and these are the hormones that tell the ovaries, okay, it's time to start uh, cycling. Um, and there are lots of feedback mechanisms on that. Um, estrogen, for example, has a, a positive feedback mechanism. So once the you cycling, she produces estrogen, which then has a positive feedback to, to keep the cycle going, so to speak. But there's also negative feedback on that, and that's caused by progesterone, that you will also, uh, after she's ovulated, will produce in a so-called corpus luteum in the ovary, and she will then start to produce progesterone, which has a negative feedback on this mechanism. So. Uh, once the ewe starts cycling, produces progesterone, and that then tells the hypothalamus to, to stop doing this, to stop ovulating. Yeah, and that the purpose of that is that if the ewe actually uh, gets pregnant, that there will not be any more cycles. Now, so what we do with these artificial devices, we, we give this progesterone stimulus, and then the removal of that will tell the hypothalamus to start excreting these hormones. But that's how the, uh, how the devices work. 
Yeah, so artificially give the progesterone and the removal of that is a stimulus to start the cycle. And at the same time, we give uh, a GnRH stimulus to start producing these hormones as well. And uh, then we're uh, almost guaranteed to, to have the cycle started. So in summary of the, of the methods, uh, we can use a teaser um, to a small extent brings the season forward and, and synchronization is variable, as I said. Uh, we can give the melatonin implants and we have an advancement on the season, but no synchronization. You can inject prostaglandins like you may be seeing done in, in cattle, but the problem so that can bring a U in heat, but that only brings her in heat once she starts cycling, started cycling and she has this so-called corpus luteum that produces prostaglandin, uh, sorry, uh, produces progesterone. And really only with these progesterone devices, so the, the cedar ovis and the sponges, um, do we both get an advancement from the season and synchronization. So how and why would we uh, use Cedar Ovis? Indeed, it was uh, you know, launched in, in 2018. Uh, and uh, yeah, the uptake has increased uh, since. First of all, this is what it uh, looks like. is a, a pack of 20 uh, devices uh, and it contains uh, 0.35 grams of uh, progesterone, uh, zero meat with zero meat with hold, and you know, milk with hold as well. Uh, so the pack contains 20 of these T-shaped uh, rubbery devices that are uh, that contain this progesterone, and then a piece of string to uh, to remove the device. And it's Show you a video of uh, how to insert the device in a minute. I'm sorry, my cat at the same time is trying to eat my laptop. So I will have to remove that. Um, so you insert uh, the device into the vagina of the sheep and keep it there for, uh, for 12 days, as I said. And then on day 12, you remove the device, give an uh, ECG injection so that uh, uh, stimulates the, uh, the LH and FSH peak I was talking about earlier. And then the onset of oestrus is uh, within one to two days after removal of the insert. And uh, this is how to uh, insert the device. So the, you have this uh, silicon rubbery T-shaped device that you push into the device, the applicator. Yeah, so it's important to keep, uh, to uh, wash them in a, uh, a non-irritable, uh, disinfectant. And then next you are going to insert. So in uh, first you move upwards and then further horizontally. Press the device and then the T-shape holds it in place. And uh, you see the little piece of uh, the, the cord that you can use to remove. And then uh, day 12, we come back to remove. Simple quick pull. You probably notice how clean that U is. And uh, yes, it doesn't seem bothered uh, with that at all. We don't need to see that again. Um, so yeah, why would you consider using Cedar Ovis over a sponge maybe? Well, the number one thing that we see far less of 
when we use the cedar obis is uh, vaginal discharge. So with, with uh, sponge, people who have used it will, will have noticed that uh, well, nearly 100% of the use, you get uh, fairly extensive vaginal discharge. And um, yeah, will that do anything to negatively influence uh, conception rates? Maybe, maybe not, but you can't really, if you see the amount of pus uh, in some of these use, you, you just cannot imagine that that can have a good influence, to say the least. So um, in 50% of the cedar obvious case, we still see a small amount of discharge, but it is normally very, very limited and, uh, and, and clear, or just a, a tiny fleck of pus, as we'll show, show some data on in a minute. Uh, yeah, whereas it's extensive as sponges. Uh, string breakage, I've used you know, quite a lot of sponges in the past and uh, and that was a frequent occurrence. And as a vet, when I was in practice, I often had to, well, regularly had farmers turn up with use where the sponges were stuck. So the, the piece of string had broken and they couldn't remove the sponge. Um, I remember a few occasions of where we tried to uh, remove it with a laparoscope, laparoscopically, and uh, and in the end the U died. So uh, we lost a few U's with that. Whereas uh, string breakage, uh, it doesn't really happen to see the rovis, and uh, even if it, the string were to break, it would still be very easy to remove the, the device. Now conception rates. Lambing rates and twinning rates. Of course, I'm showing a study here where, where they uh, were definitely higher than in sponges. Um, so in this particular study, there was definitely a positive influence on all three of them. But I'll be honest, there's also studies uh, where there's no difference in conception rates between sponge and cedar obis. Um, to me, the main selling point is uh, indeed ease of use um no string breakage no no dead use and uh, yeah no vaginal discharge or far less of it um so it's it synchronizes the easters very very well so here we see some data on uh, a flock of ewes where they uh, removed the cedar obis and then scanned the ewes over a period of uh, 58 hours, and uh, you see the percentage of use that uh, that have ovulated, and uh, yeah, after 54 hours, uh, the vast vast majority had ovulated already, and by 58 hours, all of them had. So it, it's really very good at synchronizing these uh, this use. Um, so I showed you a, bit of a larger study before. Also, want to show you some some more recent data on a uh, a small study that we did at the University of Edinburgh on, on the farm, and there was just forty Suffolk gimmers where uh, we used sponges in twenty and cedar obis in another twenty, and uh, we just scored yeah the ease of use and the, and the amount of discharge we saw. And uh, you know this is what we uh, what we saw. So out of the twenty U's, uh, seventeen of them were completely clean on on the cedar obis, and um, for the two U's had a flack of pus, and only one of them had purulent discharge. Yeah, the, this would be class purulent discharge, but on sponges it was completely the other way around. So only two of them were clean and 14 out of 20 had uh, extensive purulent discharge. So again, just demonstrating, uh, and, and we find this in uh, every study we do. So uh, practically, I've shown you how to, how to insert it. It seems uh, fairly straightforward. Um, so after removal, you put the tubs in uh, 24 hours later. Um, some people put the tubs in 
immediately after pulling a device, but uh, sometimes the uh, yeah the, the rams immediately get to business and then uh, they may have well let's say use their best seed already before the uh, before the ewe has uh, come in uh, into season as ovulate. So uh, hang on for 24 hours and then, then put the tubs in. Uh, if we're using these devices out of season, then the uh, then the tub rate the, the tub to U ratio should be uh, should be increased. Um, to one to ten, if uh, if you use it within the natural breeding season, but if you use it far out of the the normal breeding season, then you would have to uh, use a tub, uh, tub ratio one to five use. And then if you use uh, insemination, artificial insemination, um, you can uh, you do, if you inseminate into the uterus, then uh, you can do that 46 hours after you remove the device and uh, intracervically you uh, inseminate 55 hours after removal of the device. So in, in summary, uh, Cedarovis, is effective at both both inducing and, and synchronizing estrus. Uh, when you weather the how close you are to the to the season, the natural season of the U, the breeding season, uh, or not. Uh, after fifty eight hours, all use in. Uh, study that I showed had, uh, had ovulated, so it really does a good job of synchronizing. Um, so in some studies, at least, in some studies, it's uh, it, it's comparable to sponges, and in some studies, uh, Cedar Ovis significantly has a better uh, pregnancy, fertility, and twinning rate. And uh, yeah, definitely removal issues are, it's far superior in, in terms of removal uh any removal issues you may have and um, and definitely the discharge levels are way way low as i remove my cat for a second time i'm sorry i uh, that was what i was going to say uh, tonight and uh, it's a little start for your discussion thank you very much for your attention Thank you very much, Anne. That was really informative. Um, does anybody have any questions? Feel free to type them into the chat box or just ask out loud. Yeah, I do not claim to be a uh, sheep breeding expert. I'm a parastologist, really, by trade, but I've got the Oak Hill vets to help me, I think. <laughs> I hope. No. Any questions at all from anybody? Anybody any positive or negative experiences with any of these methods that I mentioned? I know personally, I hate removing sponges when they're stuck. So I am all for something that's easy to remove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you, yeah, when you actually end up putting the U down because you can't get the sponge out and it's all adhesed to the inside of the U, uh, it, you feel absolutely terrible. Yeah. Oh, we've got a question. Um, if we picked a day for AI, how long before do you put the cedar in? Um, pick the day for AI, so you put, uh, like I said, uh, so 46 hours um, for AI, so that's that's two days and then uh, and then 12 days for the cedar, so that's uh, 14 days in total. So a fortnight before AI, you would put the cedar in. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the next question we have is, how much does it cost per 20 yows? 
Huh. I think we've got an expert on that on the line. <laughs> Mr. Rob Smith, are you there? I am. I am. Uh -huh. um, I, the, you don't know the answer, pricing questions for, for practices, obviously, but the, um, I think the going rate for sort of uh, 20 seeders is in the region of sort of between 70 and 80 pounds for a pack of 20. I might shoot me down if I'm wrong, Mike or Amy, whoever's on the line for the, for the practice, but I think that's what the sort of roughly what the, uh, what the, the, the cost is. And um, so I can get back to you with the answer to that question, Lisa, and um, when I'll have a look on the, uh, on the system. And um, the next- They're normally slightly more expensive than the sponges. Okay. But, uh, but then again, if you save a sheep by being able to get them out, yeah. worth the cost, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And the next question is, can you put them in on the same day, but pull them out on different days to spread them out? Uh, yeah, you can leave them in up to 14 days. So if you, if you want to pull them uh, sequentially to, to um, indeed stagger the, um, the heat a little bit so the rams are, uh, have not got too many years to concentrate on, you can, you can certainly do that. Yeah. Some people remove them, uh, stagger the removal of the device. <laughs> Um, someone else has just said that they use them, they used cedars for the first time last year and much preferred them to sponges and would not go back to sponges now. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice there. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a question for me, Jan. How, how do you have to manage your tops differently when you synchronize the use? How do you have to manage the tops differently? Um, do not really. I mean, of course, you, yeah, just like we all use this, this will only work under at a decent body condition school, right, etc. And uh, but, um, in itself, there's no uh, no differences in management as, as what you normally do uh, when you get into topping. Oh, I think there's another question coming through. If we just hold hang fire, <laughs> half of it's come through. Oh, the rest of it hasn't come through yet. So does anyone have any more questions? Oh yeah. How many days before AI do you put the implant in the ear? And also, is it worth doing the tops too? I would, with the implant of the ear, you, you bring the season forward, but you do not know when the you will actually cycle, start cycling exactly. So you cannot use the, the melatonin implants in the ear to, uh, for AI. So all you can do is to say, well, I want them to start cycling in, uh, in August rather than in, uh, in October, and then uh, therefore I'm going to put the device in two months before that. But you have no control over what the, when the you actually ovulates. So the implant almost moves the breeding season, but doesn't give you exact dates, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it tells the sheep oh, it's getting dark, even though it's not getting dark, and then uh, therefore she starts cycling. And is it worth doing the tops as well as the owls? Sorry, is it worth? Is it worth doing the tops with the um, implant as well as the app? Uh, yeah, is it, it, indeed. It also uh, increases um, both the libido and, uh, and the sperm count in, uh, in tops. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to say that. Good question. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Um, 
when and what do you start feeding cups to have them in good breeding quality to have the sheep lambing mid-December? Oh, I know. <laughs> Would you like to help me on that one? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, how do you get the tubs to work earlier? Is the second part to that question. What, to feed them to make the tubs work earlier? Yes. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know the answer to the question, I'm sorry. I, it's very tempting to, uh, <laughs> to make something up, but I, I, I won't. I made a conscious decision at some point to uh, never start BSing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I guess the, if you wanted to get your tubs to work earlier, you can use the implants to help bring the season the earlier for them. Yeah, yeah but feeling-wise, I don't. So. Yeah. I don't claim to know enough about that. Mm. Yeah, it's just making sure they're in a good body condition score and feeling mm. fit and well. Yeah. <laughs> but is, is body condition score a, a problem in tubs around that time? Yeah, it won't be, I guess. Yeah. Well, if anything, the problem might be getting them too fast, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we do offer uh, top MOTs as part of the practice, and we also do um, electro ejaculation to make sure your tubs are working. Um, we do have some tub testing days coming up. I believe you all got a little uh, leaflet in your cheese box. That kind of so yeah, we have some days coming up where you can bring your tubs to the practice. We'll give them a good MOT, check their teeth, um, the testicular tone and size, make sure their feet are all looking good, check their body condition score, and then we can also check their semen quality to make sure that it is all swimming in one direction and is all looking nice and normal under the microscope. Um, so especially if you're wanting to get your tubs to work early and you want to make sure they're working early, you can definitely bring them down and we can have a look at them. Yeah, and if, if people are, uh, have always used sponges and, and want to give this a go, uh, we'll be we're quite keen to, uh, to give you the, help you uh, with that experience. and. Uh, yeah, indeed, so put, put some of these in your hand maybe and uh, so that you can start to use them and, uh, and, and see the difference yourself because that's normally uh, what really, so if you can set up a little study comparing, for example, some sponges with the cedar uh, on your farm, then do speak to your, uh, your vets and then uh, we'll see what, uh, what can do for you. That sounds incredible. Yes, we'd definitely be interested in having a look at that. Yeah. Um, is there any more questions? I've got one for you, Amy, um, about your, your tub soundness checks. If if there is a an issue with the tub, how how long do you need to write it generally? So how far ahead do you have to plan yeah. these things? So that's a really good question, actually. So um, sperm takes about six weeks to um, form fully. So anything that can cause a fever or anything that causes any sort of inflammation or swelling around the testicles as well, can affect fertility for up to six weeks from when the fever goes. So if you have a lameness problem, if the animal say, has swelling in its feet, therefore a raised body temperature for four or five days, from the end of the fever, six weeks on, you can then have fertility issues. So you really want to be getting your tubs tested a couple months, if not longer, before you're putting them in, just to make sure that they are fit and ready to go. Yeah. Any more questions? No worries. It is all uh, it's reasonably straightforward, I guess. Maybe. The um, few things to remember, but yeah. And if anybody has any questions that they think of after the meeting or whatever, just email the farm account, and uh, so that's farm at oakhill vetscom and we can get back to you uh, either tomorrow or Monday. Yeah. Any last questions off anybody? Well, grand. Okie dokie. Thank you so much, Jan, for um, this evening. It's been, I found it very interesting and very informative. Uh, okay. Thank you to everyone for attending. Uh, this has been our second uh, Red Rose Sheep Discussion Group meeting.
Our next one is the 8th of July, and we're really hoping to be able to have that in person, which is an exciting concept, isn't it, really? So we'll get back to you all with a location for that one, hopefully very shortly. Um, and yeah, thank you all very much for attending this evening. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves.